hello a divided by b equals aspect ratio uniform space has only two parameters one aspect ratio two time delay aspect ratio defines the shape of energy entering a given region of space but not its amplitude velocity or length define the time during which the properly shaped energy can be accommodated by a region of space Aspect ratio is really a definition of the relative compatibility of adjacent regions of space. Does flowing energy current largely travel unimpeded through an interface, or does it largely reflect at the interface? Space has quiet zones through which energy glides virtually unreflected. There are also noisy zones where energy current becomes incoherent, bounces about and splits apart. Noisy zones in space have either rapidly changing geometry or rapidly changing impedance. Efficient magnetic gating is not new. I have found schematics and drawing as far back at 1897 in some of Nikola Tesla's patents. More recently and much better known today is the Cromery converter. Each rotor on the non-magnetic shaft in the Cromery converter can be seen to have aspect ratio, where the flow of magnetic flux or a better term electromagnetic potentials, can charge each rotor with these electromagnetic potentials as the rotor moves into its low reluctance position, for example, aligns with the electromagnetic field. If one was to apply the right hand rule to the Cromery converter, one can see that there is a pinch zone between the two coils on each magnetic rotor. Effectively this zone is made up from magnetic north from one coil and a magnetic north from the opposite coil or if the current is flowing in the opposite direction, a magnetic south from one coil and a magnetic south from the opposite coil. This effect is created by the very flow of current in the coils. Thus, when the Cromery converter is loaded with a resistive load, the device speeds up as the rotor is magnetically gated. A visual representation of the poles on each rotor will look like this, in the case where two north poles are forced together. In this region, where two magnetic poles are forced together, a pinch zone is created and the externally applied electromagnetic energy can be gated. The magnetic field is directly proportional to the flow of current in the coil and for this reason we will see that a certain current, creating a certain magnetic field strength, is required to gate this region of space into an off position. It is important to note. The magnetic gating action is a direct result of the impressed EMF on the rotor coils by the time rate of change of the external source of electromagnetic energy being impressed on the magnetic rotor. For example, if permanent magnets were used in place of the shown primary input power coils, the time rate of change of the electromagnetic potentials from the permanent magnets impressed on the rotor due to the rotor's revolving action would be the energy source for this gating effect on the rotor. Then the only input for the Cromery converter that you need to apply is the input to the motor to revolve the rotor. Sufficient evidence exists to show that Floyd Sweet may have used a similar gating effect in his vacuum triode amplifier. After years of research we think it is possible that Floyd used a similar technique to gate the externally applied electromagnetic energy of the permanent magnets simply by drawing current from his specially designed and built power coils. After many years of dead ends and detective work we have finally put together a myriad of loose ends and mistruths. We believe that anyone that put the time into the vacuum triode amplifier if they had three pieces of information could put the real story together and solve the riddle. 1. The paper Nothing is Something by Floyd A. Sweet Ph.D. 2. The video, Floyd Sweet Forgotten Genius. 3. Either one of the three schematics that currently are all over the internet. Knowing that Floyd started the VTA with only the flick of a switch from his oscillator was also a huge step in realizing the fact that the permanent magnets were never conditioned as was explained. Magnet conditioning is a hoax, a lie told by those that worked with Floyd, possibly for a few reasons. The description of the vacuum triode coils between the permanent magnets from the document Nothing is Something is as follows. The principle of superposition states that, in order to calculate the resultant intensity of superimposed fields, each field must be dealt with individually as though the other were not present. 
the resultant is obtained by vector addition of each field considered singularly. Consider for a moment the construction of the triode which includes the bifolar coils located within the fields of the two conditioned magnets. When the current in one half of the conductors in the coils, that is, one of the bifolar elements in each coil, of the device is moving up, both the current and the magnetic field follow the right hand rule. The resultant motional E field would be vertical to both and inwardly directed. At the same time the current in the other half of the conductors in the coils is moving down and both the current and magnetic field follow the right hand rule. The resulting motion E field is again vertical to both and inwardly directed. Thus, the resultant field intensity is double the intensity attributable to either one of the set of coil conductors taken singularly. If we take into account the description of the coils and the schematic, clearly we can see a problem. Relative to position, we cannot have each winding, in the described coil arrangement, see a motional E field inwardly directed both at the same time unless each winding is separate. One winding on the top and one winding on the bottom of each power coil. We can see visual evidence of this also. Floyd Sweet also describes this in the Nothing is Something paper in his equations. E equals B times V plus negative B times negative V which equals 2B times V. This simply means that, because of the direction of each of the turns and the way it's connected, each set of coils has electrons moving in different directions and the end result is, that we have to cross connect the output terminals to correct the negative sign. For example, get the AC phasing correct. Walt Rosenthal said, and I quote the VTA likes to always see a minimum load of 25 watts. We now can see why this was the case. Walt also said, and I quote, the VTA can be started by momentary connection of a 9 volt battery to the drive coils when the machine is operated in the self-powered mode. The operation is stopped by momentary interruption of power to the power coils. This information tells us that once everything is correct and the right combinations of wire, turns and coil phasing, that the unit only needs a tickle under the chin and it bursts into life. We hope to have more information soon. Thank you for supporting our projects.